I'm going to do a series on my new to me Maze Engineering dual rectifier solo head, 100 watt all tube amp head. You know it, you love it, this thing's famous. Dream amp for many. I got one. I don't need one. <laughs> I definitely don't need it. Part of the reason I don't need it is because it's really loud, which is why I got this. The Bagheera PS1 Power Soak. You plug the amp into it and you have this big knob. And right now I've got it down to, forcing it down to 5 watts. <laughs> and it's still loud. Part of the other reason I wanted to get this particular one is you have 4, 8, and 16 ohm connections. Up here you have an XLR emulated microphone out, the speaker lead here to go down to your speaker cab, and then here is just a straight line out. So this is just the amp sound and it runs over into my computer running Reaper. What's neat about this is you're going to get to hear the Sennheiser E609 at the same time as the raw line out from the Bagheera the Mesa into my PreSonus USB interface into Reaper. Since I only have a two-channel interface, I'll then have to plug in the, uh, the emulated and do the riff again so that you can hear it. Let's get to it. Signal chain is pretty straightforward. This is my baritone, my LTD MH401BFM. It is running directly into the Mesa. The Mesa is on channel 3 set to modern. I don't know if you can see the dots there. Volume's halfway. Presence is about one. The gain is over here also about one. And then basically it looks like noonish, noonish, and about one o'clock on your bass mid and treble. I figured I should probably stop and kind of explain exactly why you would use a power attenuator with a guitar amplifier. So as I mentioned, the dual rectifier is really loud. Now, tube amps, and amps in general, but tube amps especially, work by... The reason they have so much power is they, they really overdrive those tubes and really push them hard. So to get a tube amp to sound the way you want it, you're going to have it pretty loud, 50, 75 percent easy, which on a 100 watt amp in a bedroom or a basement is incredibly loud. So the attenuator, you run the guitar through it, it's a passive device because it's taking all the power from the amp and just choking it down and only letting a trickle of it out. So that way your amp, you have all the settings in the way you want. You've got that dual rectifier cranked out, you got it dimed out, whatever for your tone, and then you can play it at a nice, comfortable, low volume setting, which is good because that way you don't kill yourself and you don't blow your ears out and you don't piss off your neighbors and your wife and your kid and the dogs and everything else. I'll leave a little bit of the camera audio in and you can hear the amp sounds good because it's coming out through the 2x12 but you can still hear my strings clicking away. So it's not that loud. It's nice. And this is going through both the E609 and direct line out of the Bagheera. So what'd you think? I'm pretty amazed actually that the E609 pretty much perfectly captures exactly what the amp and cabinet sound like. When you're standing there play it, I think if you compare it to the, the camera's audio, they sound very similar. The line out and the emulated line out, I mean you didn't even notice. You know, unless you were looking at the subtitle to let you know that it changed. I don't know if it's the same circuit and they just wired in the two different outputs. So that way, whatever cable you have, the XLR or quarter inch jack. But to me, they sounded exactly the same. I have yet to find something I'm impressed with on the emulation. It always kind of sounds dirty, like, like there's this fuzz on top of the sound. It's kind of workable when I had both of them running, the E609 and the line out. It kind of helped give the sound a little bit more realistic. I could kind of see maybe using that in a recording scenario of, you know, that way it's kind of... It'd probably be better just to do your normal double tracking and have the one slightly offset and detune just a hair to get, get that sound rather than 
the emulation. So I think I will just continue to use the E609 because, I mean, that's what it does. That's its job, and it does it very well. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. And uh, let me know what you want to see me do with this amp in the future. Uh, like I said, I'm going to make a series of it. I'll probably go over each channel and the effects loop. I mean, there there's four videos right there that I could play with. So let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.